Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery again, and this lab is for my Physics 2 students, and today we're going to be working with a Wheatstone Bridge. Wheatstone Bridge is a device used to measure electrical resistance, and it does that by comparing a known resistor to an unknown resistor. So there's some diagrams on the board back here behind me I'm going to explain. Um, but your known resistor, that's going to be labeled as R1 in your diagram. If you haven't done it already, by the way, go ahead and print off your lab handout. But R1 is going to be a known resistor. So we're going to have three different options for that. We're going to have a 2.2 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and an 18 ohm resistor. Now normally resistors, you identify them by their little tiny color-coded bands. And if you had it right in front of you, you'd be able to see the different color stripes and figure out what those values would be. Now the resistors you're gonna see me using, I've labeled them so you can clearly identify which one is which. R2 and R3, in this Wheatstone bridge is really just a long wire, and that wire is 100 centimeters long, and so that's why when you look at R2 and R3, their values are always gonna add up to equal 100 centimeters. We don't need to know their exact resistance because resistance is proportional to the length. The longer the length, the greater the resistance is gonna be. And then Rx is gonna be your unknown resistor that you're trying to solve for. You're gonna see a box of seven unknown resistors. So we're gonna plug those into position Rx when we get there. So what's happening is we're gonna use a galvanometer. That galvanometer is gonna be positioned in between kind of two portions of our circuit. We got a parallel circuit going on with R2 and R3, and again, that's just one solid wire, and then Rx and R1 connected on a separate side of the circuit. So that what happens here, let me make sure I got a good color, is that as this current flows in to the circuit, the current can split and take either one of those paths. And it can pass through Rx, it can pass through R2, but then it's gonna come to this junction where we're gonna have our galvanometer, and what we want is to have a balanced circuit. Balanced so that no current flows through this galvanometer. That whatever current went through R2, it continues on through R3. Whatever current flowed through Rx, flows on through R1. All that current joins back together over here again. But we don't wanna find any current flowing through the galvanometer. So what we're gonna be doing is changing this position. We're gonna be able to move this connection back and forth so that we find that point where no current flows through our galvanometer. At that point, everything's gonna be in balance. And then we can solve for Rx. The same formula is in your lab handout. But Rx is gonna be equivalent to R1 times R2 divided by R3. So again, that's kind of the background, how this thing's work and the math that you're gonna be using. So let me show you all the materials and how to set it all up. On our setup, first thing you see on your page is a diagram of this Wheatstone bridge with lots of little points, A, you know, B over here, C, D, E, so on and so forth. And then where everything is gonna be labeled or measured, connected from. And so as I scroll back here, then you can see this actual Wheatstone bridge. It's just a long you know, wooden object right here. Um, we're going to have R1 down here in this position. R3, notice this meter stick's a little different from what you'd normally use in a lab. So R3, we're going to measure along the top side of this meter stick, starting at zero, going you know, down here toward 100. But R2 is going to be measured on the bottom side of this meter stick. So like we said earlier, R2 and R3 are always gonna to add together to equal you know, 100. So if, for example, we were right here, we got 79 and 21, well that adds up to 100. Rx is gonna be in this top position. Across the top here, we just have um, all these copper bars connected here. These copper bars have very small resistances. We have our R1 values, 2.2, 10, or 18 ohms. We'll be trading those out depending on the situation. I'll tell you which one we're using at each time. We've got our multimeter over here. Today we're gonna to be using this to measure uh, resistance. So it's gonna be set 
right down here at about 400 ohms we're gonna have it set on we have our box of unknown resistors all right so what these are really just links of wire that's been wrapped around this core so this first one for example is 40 centimeters of wire and it's number 30 gauge wire and it's made out of nichrome so it's a blend it's an alloy of nickel and chromium is what it is and then our other values in here other unknown resistors are just different links 80 120 160 200 and then down here you'll notice this is also 200 centimeters but it's got a different gauge it's gauge 26 wire and then this is a thousand centimeters of number 30 gauge copper wire this one is a repeat of this one right here so there's just seven unknowns okay but when you're looking at your data table let me get to it i should have been there already all right when you're looking at your data table the reason these blanks are in here is so that you can fill in hey in this video we're using nichrome wire we're not using a nickel silver alloy is what this ns wire stands for okay but you're going to fill in all of these as nichrome wire that we're using in this experiment you'll lay you'll fill in which r1 we're using and then the measurements we get for r2 and r3 that i'll call out to you during the video calculate rx using the formula i showed you a minute ago on the board and then we're also going to measure rx with the multimeter so that we can come back and compare these measurements to what we calculated test uh, the accuracy of our wheatstone bridge all right so let me get this all set up and we'll get started on the first part of the experiment one of the first things we need to do in this experiment is measure the actual resistances of our known resistors so like we said they're according to their color-coded stripes they're 2.210 and 18 ohms but we want to get their actual values It'd be similar to what we did with our capacitors in a previous lab so i'm going to take this 2.2 ohm resistor i'm going to connect each side now one thing it doesn't matter which side's which red or black because this resistor doesn't have a positive or negative terminal and it might take it just a moment or so here um, it tends to start with a little higher resistances measures and drop down just a hair as it finally balances and stabilizes so that 2.2 ohm resistor you know is really measuring I uh, will say about 2.3 ohms. It's bouncing around there a little bit, but you know, seems to settle more so maybe on 2.3. Of course, I say that now it's on 2.4. All right, so either way, okay, 2.3, 2.4 ohms as it jumps around a little bit more. Okay, do the same thing with this 10 ohm resistor as I make this connection. And let's see what it's going to measure. Looks like, yeah, looks like it's actually going to measure 10 or 9.9, 9.9 ohms, 10 either way. Um, whichever one you think it stayed on longer, you can record that as its actual resistance. And then for our 18 ohm resistor, let's see where it wants to settle out here, 18.2 ohms okay so we have our actual resistances for r1 and now let me get everything set up for us let me walk you through the setup so again we have the sweet stone bridge connected here what i did first take my power supply and i've connected from the negative terminal down here to one side and connected from the positive terminal down here to the other end all right now on this end we're connecting r1 and so i've made two connections here so currently we have that 2.2 ohm resistor as r1 so that's what we're going to use on the first one down here in the middle we have our galvanometer right? and on the other end of the galvanometer we have this little key and again what we're searching for here is when i come back let me zoom out a little and I touch this wire down here, you see that galvanometer move way over to the right. 
Well, we're trying to find a place where it doesn't move at all. If I touch way down here, notice the galvanometer move way to the left. So that tells me the zero point's gonna be somewhere in between those locations. You see that thing jumping round and round and round? Hey, we're trying to find a place where it doesn't move at all. We're gonna do that more in just a minute when I can hold everything steady. And then Rx down here on the other end. So for our first one, we have the 40 centimeter uh, number 30 nichrome wire. That's currently Rx that we're gonna use for number one. Our power supply over here is set up. Um, I'm gonna change this just a hair, increase it up to 1.5 volts is what we want it to be set on, okay? So everything's set up. Now we're ready to start testing our first unknown resistor. So we're testing our first unknown resistor. R1 is 2.2 ohms. I've got you zoomed in so you can see the galvanometer uh, more so than see any of these tiny numbers on the meter stick. But if I touch you know, out here to one side, for example, you see the galvanometer go hard to your right. If I go down to the other end, you see the galvanometer go hard to your left. So I know the correct spot to get zero is somewhere in between. And so as I kind of just work my way over here little by little, you see we didn't go so hard to the side that time. And now we went a little bit back to the opposite side. So if I just kind of slowly move this around Trying to get that spot right about there. Okay, and you see if I go t a little more, it jumps the other side. So you can always kind of test. If you can get it to sway back and forth, you know you're passing right over the correct position. All right, so let me mark that position with my finger. All right, so R2 is this bottom value. So R2 is gonna be 73.8 centimeters, 73.8 centimeters for R2, and then R3 will be this top value 26.2 centimeters, 26.2 centimeters for R3. All right, I'm going to trade out my unknown resistor, and we're going to do this again. I put in the 80 centimeter um, resistor for RX, so 80 centimeter, number 39 chrome. And what I also did over here is I've switched out resistor one. Okay, I just know from experience we're gonna need a little bit bigger R1. I've gone up to 10 ohms this time. And the reason I've done that is ideally to get a more precise measurement, you wanna be measuring somewhere here closer to the middle of the wire. You don't wanna be on one end or the other end. Um, so I know <clears throat> that as these Rx values get longer and longer, that the total resistance is gonna get bigger. And so we were already on the first one, we were already kind of down here to the far right. So I increased R1 to bring us back, hopefully closer to the middle. And so hopefully you can see this galvanometer. Let me change my angles here for you just a little bit, all right. And so as we start to look for this location, so if I test right in the middle first, 50-50, jumps hard to the right. So let me test over here. If I do 30-70, jumps hard to the left. So I know, you know it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 70. So as I kind of work my way down here, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, you start to see it creeping closer and closer to the middle there. Kind of hangs out on zero and then it kind of goes to the right side. So let me back up just a little bit right about, right about there. And so we are pretty much on for R2, 55.0 and R3, 45.0. 55.0 and 45.0. Okay, that was our second unknown resistor. Now I'm going to set up for the third using the third unknown resistor. This is 120 centimeters. It's just off the camera over there, but 120 centimeters. 
R1, I still have it set as the 10 ohm resistor. And so again, if I just start off, I may be testing right here at 50-50. We jump to the right. If I test maybe down here at 70-30, we jump to the left. So I'm looking for something in between 50 and 70 for R2. And so if sometimes your galvanometer jumps so hard it gets stuck right there. Okay, like that also. So as I come in here, trying to find, I'm just gently sliding across, pretty much on zero. So let me back up right there and you kind of tell I'm passing over the correct position. You hold it right here. All right, and so we'll say that's R2 is 64.8, R2 64.8 centimeters. And R3, 35.2 centimeters. 35.2 centimeters for R3. That was our third unknown resistor. Resistor number four, this is a 160 centimeter wire that I'm using here. And now I have also switched out R1 and made it the 18 ohm resistor. I did that because on the last one, we were already kind of creeping our way down here. You know, it's 64.8 and 35.2. The next one would have just carried us farther to the right. Like I said, we want to stay closer to the middle if we can. So I've increased R1 to 18 ohms. All right, so I'm going to touch here at the middle, 50-50. Everything jumps over to the right. We try over here, 70-30. Everything jumps to the left. So I know I should be somewhere in between those. And so as I just kind of scroll along here to get us on zero, there we're getting there. Okay, so I went a little far. I'm going to come back just a little bit here. And we're going to mark that with my finger. All right, so we're saying R2 is 57.0, R3 43.0. So R2 57.0, R3 43.0 for unknown resistor number four. All right, our fifth unknown resistor. Now we're on the 200 centimeter number 30 nichrome wire. Still R1 is set on, or set as 18 ohms that I've got in place right there. And so as we start to test, again, we're gonna test 50-50. Everything goes hard to the right. Come down here, 70, 30 goes, you know, kind of hard to the left. So we're just looking for that position. And well, we have looked out and found a little early this time. All right, so right about here. So we're gonna say R2, 62.9 centimeters. 62.9 centimeters for R2, and then R3, 37.1 centimeters, 37.1 for R3, and that was our fifth unknown resistor. Now, unknown resistor number six, this is also 200 centimeters, but this is number 26 gauge nichrome wire. The gauge number is important. The gauge is dealing with how thick the wire is the smaller the gauge number the thicker the wire and the thicker the wire the less resistance it should have so a smaller gauge number represents a smaller resistance and so if we want to test here I'm still using the 18 ohms by the way is R number one but we test here at 50 50 everything goes to the left this time I'm gonna come back over here if I keep going to the left say 30, 70, everything jumps to the right. So I knew because this has less resistance, I should be back farther to my left-hand side on this case. But we want to find that position where everything reaches zero again. So we kind of scroll around right in this neighborhood. Then we pause right about there all right so we're going to say r2 r2 42.8 centimeters 42.8 centimeters r3 
57.2 centimeters. 57.2 for R3, 42.8 for R2. Last unknown resistor. This one is the copper. It's a thousand centimeters, so it's 10 meters worth of wire, number 30 gauge. Now, because copper is such a good conductor, now I've switched back over here to the 2.2 ohm resistors, R1. So R1's 2.2 ohms. And so as we go to test here, as I go to the middle, 50-50, galvanometer jumped over to the right. If I come over here a little bit, you know, it's still leaning just a little bit to the right. Now I'm too far. So let me back up here and find just our right position. It doesn't take much to want to wiggle and jump around there. Right, right about here. So we're going to say R2 R2 61.3 centimeters, 61.3, and R3 38.7, 38.7 centimeters. All right, so now what we need to do next is I need to measure using the multimeter what are the resistances for each of these unknowns. So now that you have R1, R2, R3, you can calculate all the Rx's but now we want to measure them with a the multimeter. This will be the last column on your data table. So I've got them lined up here in order. And so I'm going to take the very first one, the 40 centimeter wire. I'm going to make this connection so we can measure this. And that's, again, what you're doing, this way you can compare what you calculate um, using the Wheatstone Bridge data to what this multimeter measures. And that'll give you an idea of you know, how accurate we may have been with our Wheatstone bridge. So first one, looks like it wants to settle here about 5.7 ohms, 5.7 for the 40 centimeter wire. Set that aside, grab the 80 centimeter wire now, make our connections. Give it a minute here, not a minute, but a few seconds to kind of balance out and so it looks like it wants to set around 11.7, 11 11.7 ohms, 11.7, 11.8 right, for 80 centimeter wire. 120 centimeter wire, if I don't drop it. 120 centimeter wire, make our connection. 17.9 ohms, 17.9. 160 centimeters. Twenty-three point twenty-three point four. Twenty-three point four ohms for 160. Alright, now this is the number two hundred thirty gauge wire. That's a thirty gauge wire first here. Let me check my connection here. Get it loose. All right, 32, 32.1 ohms, 32 32.1 we'll call it. That was the number 30 gauge. All right, number, now this is the 200, number 26 gauge. 200, number 26 gauge, resistance 13.4 ohms, 13.4. And then lastly are Copper wire, 10 meters, 1,000 centimeters, 3.1 ohms, 3.1 ohms of resistance. So now we've made all the measurements you needed, measured R1, R2, R3, you can calculate Rx, you can compare that calculation to what we found with the multimeter a moment ago. Then as you get into your questions, you're looking at things like, well, how does the length relate to the radius? How does the gauge number relate to the radius? So we talked a little bit about that. And then at the very end, you're asked to solve for the resistivity. So resistivity deals with what the material it actually is. Is it a copper wire? Is it nichrome wire? 
what is that material? Every material has got a different resistivity. Works out that the resistance of a wire is equal to its resistivity times its length divided by its area. So if we want to rearrange that and solve for resistivity, then the resistivity is the resistance times the area divided by length. But what you've got to think about is when you're dealing with that wire, the area is the area of that circle. Now it's a tiny little circle, but we want to take this area, pi r squared, plug it in right here. So that really when you're solving for this resistivity, you're going to take the resistance times the area, so capital R for resistance, lowercase r for the radius, which is given to you on your page, divide that by the length. Make sure right here, this length is measured in meters. Right? And then you, know, you might calculate this number separately or you might plug in the radius there, however you wanna do it. But if you need any help, feel free to reach out to me. Y'all take care.